Mayday, mayday, mayday. Katagunas on the rocks. The Katagunas on the rocks. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Yes, to the badge 9-4. Well, we've had a report this morning that uh, a Barton Port trawler had gone up on the rocks at Rathen Burn Island. This news came from Shannon Air Rescue. It has been confirmed that the, the boat is the Carriguna, a uh, skipper and four of a crew. Well, the position is not too clear at the moment uh, as to what actually happened. Although it uh, is confirmed that uh, you know the boat has gone up on the rocks and uh, the search operation is underway. We have uh, rock on a burn island. Lifeboat is there as well. Now we've got people on the shore searching around the shore as well. At this stage, we're looking for survivors. Keep your fingers crossed. Just hoping that there will be some survivors at this stage. Board, but uh, you know, it's too early in the day to confirm this so far, but that's the information we got. Yeah, it's very, very sad, you know, particularly sort of coming soon after the Evelyn Marie disaster. But well, it's uh, really left the shock to the world. There's no way we can explain it away. You know, it's very, very tragic altogether. Catlin O'Brien is a, it's shaped a bit like a horseshoe. It seems to be uh, the horseshoe, the legs of it are pointing northwest. The accident happened on the southern leg of the horseshoe. The boat was coming down from the north and steamed straight into the leg. 
Now the legs are, represent reefs around 150 feet deep to the bottom of them. They extend about a quarter of a mile out to sea from the actual island. Some of them are submerged. Now the, uh, the boat was coming from the north down to round the corner to Winterkilly Bags, just the same as the, it's the previous disaster that was here with the Evelyn Marie. It struck very, very close into the island, which is the mystery of the whole thing, how two boats could strike the same area. The Caraguna went down the, the marks left by the Evelyn Marie. It had been an older boat than the Evelyn Marie. The Evelyn Marie was a comparatively new boat. It, uh, it broke up much quicker and uh, it's scattered all over the place. Well, it's supposed to be that the, the saint that was here, Saint Asicus, said when he left the rock, he left the island here, that if it was ever uninhabited, that there would be three boats lost very close to the inhabitation of it. You must believe it now, there's two gone already. means that it's too much of a freak that they should hit the same rock two boats. There's definitely something wrong somewhere. If there were an inquiry into the last when the Emmy Reeves sank, this possibly wouldn't have happened. And this may be they might be wrong now. There's definitely a freak somewhere or something wrong. This is one of the flares that was thrown out. Um, it must be because they say it should not be used for practice. 
once it's been thrown out, it must have been, must have caught in the net or something. He went out on Monday afternoon, it was four o'clock. He did nothing that day but fixing on the car he had, fixing the lights in the car and repairing the car. He went away to fish at four in the evening. That was Monday, Monday afternoon. He was a very fine boy, very strong. And good natured. They decided to go fishing. He was only fishing for three weeks, and he seemed to be enjoying it. And thought it was a good life, just. And then hoping for the for the heron to come along, you know. The heron season would do very well at the heron, you know. Only one son, but I say I lost two sons. I lost a son and a son in law. I, I was definitely not in favour of the fish. I don't know why, but I like boats. But I don't want those in the sea. I felt it was dangerous because I've seen too many lads getting drowned. I mean, I only had one brother and he's gone now. My only sister who was married, lost her husband. She's left on her own with two children. Mummy and Daddy had only one son. I mean, they're gone. It's very hard to take with you, know. But it's God's will. He obviously wanted them, so they're gone now, and we just have to accept it, really. We're a 
11 lives lost in the last 19 months out of the one village. Uh, the first boat, the Evelyn Marie, the value of it was at the moment, I suppose, around four to five hundred thousand pounds. This one was about two hundred thousand pounds. Now there are, say, upward of ninety boats operating between Killybegs, Burton Port, and the surrounding ports in this area. You're off an area called Ross Beg. It's the, the strongest fishing grounds about this area, and there are men. Each boat will carry six to eight of a crew. Now, if there, there is some reason somewhere for those boats going onto that reef, two of them hit the same spot, the same conditions, perfect con night conditions. Now, it's not hard for to realize that 11 people out of a village, I suppose, with a population of 200, it's not hard to, 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 to they want to know why. We want to know why, and we want to try, if we can, to recover the bodies, just to minimise the, the the grief that's experienced there at the moment. I mean, there's there's no question. It's 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 logical to say, it's reasonable to say, they're dead, and what more can be done for them? But there were nobody. There was no survivors. Nobody was taken off the Evelyn Marie. There were two bodies found floating. They were found, and to the people of that area there was a certain amount of relief. There is no relief for the rest of them. They are at the moment grief stricken. We must get the bodies if we can and all, uh, all reasonable efforts will be made to, to get them and there's no way around that. Seeing my sister's husband was the only married man on the boat and because he had two children, I felt very happy that his body was recovered more than anybody else, more than my own brother's really, because at least his two children and his wife of their father's grave to visit, you know, and so it was very hard to tell a child, you know, that they had a father, I suppose, without having any proof of it, sort of, you know, at least they see where he's buried and everything, you know. So I'm very thankful his body was recovered anyway. It's very hard when the other boys weren't recovered either, but I think we're thankful anyway that Ted's body was recovered. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord has received blessed God our most women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord has received blessed God our most women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb,
conditions being so bad now, it's, the divers haven't really had the chance you know, to get down. Like, if the conditions were better, they'd be to know, so just have to wait and hope that the weather does improve so that they will get down. Hope the bodies will be recovered. It's very hard to realise that they're dead, really, when you haven't actually seen a body, you know. I hope they'll continue to search anyway, you know, at least have to be optimistic about it. It would be a nice thing to have them, if, you could, if the good bodies could be found and to be buried in some graveyard, you know. You'd be content then, we'd all be content then, if all the bodies were found. And We got here, we got here from Fife, we got here on the Wednesday morning. So we're here searching since, and we intend to keep on searching for another week in here. Oh, there's, there is hope, there's hope, and the one that's in this search, of something coming, you know, when the wreckage is coming in, you can you always hope that you'll, something may come, you know. At least we'll hope so, anyway. Well, for I really think about it, that the time was lost in the beginning. I think the diving team should have been here earlier. I think in a case like this, for I can leave Fife and I'm here the next morning, surely a diving team should manage to be here before that as well. And the first and second days was the time that I think myself had a great chance of recovering the bodies. Conditions have changed with this storm that has blown up. Uh, they've just got a general idea of what we have to expect on the dive. So what we want to do now with the arrival of the, the, the Army divers and the Navy divers is to arrange it from the wall out, from the wreck out. That's to include setting down a pattern first thing in the morning to get a, a some sort of a search pattern. Now, Paddy, you were saying about the search pattern. The throttle men can't get right in. They can put down four boys, and we can take shot lines from them into where the wreck is when we find it. When the divers go down, they'll to the bottom, onto the onto the weight. You'll bring a light line with you, and you'll bring that light line into the wall, and you leave it there. You tie it onto the weight, and when you get in, you fix it onto some point on the wall. This will be the first dive in the morning. Whoever will do this, or the first four dives. I don't know if we'll need four for to well, set we this up. Divers available. Yeah, I think we could field possibly two teams of, of four each and a team of yeah. three. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, you may and Joe, because we'll handle the boat and we'll dive off the... We came out, we were called at 10 o'clock in the morning, we were in Bombay, and got here about 1 o'clock. Unfortunately, we could only muster three divers on the first day and there was no inflatable boat cover. So between us, Neil Bracken and myself decided to call the dive off, hoping for better weather the second day. And unfortunately, we haven't had any. I see that the organisation was slow in getting off the ground. Very slow, because it would have been very easy to get the gear up, 
by helicopter and an inflatable before light went on the first day. Okay. Bill! 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 We've got two and a half hours of journeys on this machine, so let's have it. All right. I want one each and hold it. You know what I mean? Hell like that. You can hold it. You can hold it. Hold it. See behind me here, the divers are preparing shot lines. From the surface, they have a bye, and it goes down to about 150 feet. See? Now the diver, when he leaves the boat, gets onto the line, heads down until he gets to 100 feet. And then from 100 feet, he goes straight in, around, in on the, in a, around the gullies. Well, he caught a few of those look. things this time, you know. He has another diver with him with a rope on between them. Turns about, back out onto the same rope, back up. That's what they're preparing right now. And uh, it looks as if uh, they won't need it because, as you see, the weather is really bad. And uh, I wouldn't think they'd go today. But just in case it gets better, it's all ready. Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. My soul hopes in the Lord. Eternal rest granted to him, O Lord. Uh, it won. As soon as you've finished that drop, can you come back? About 15 personnel waiting on you to do trips straight over and back. <laughs> You know, I found it impossible to believe. It's very hard to realise, you know, when there there were no bodies. Well, there, you know, my husband's body wasn't found and there was no wreckage of the boat and I found it terribly hard to realise. Now, I did really go round, you know, I'd go round all the shores and I'd hope that you'd find something, you know, that, that you would know that was from the Evelyn Marie and um, that it would help to bring the tragedy home to you, you know. I thought at the time that it was an awful thing to be doing, sort of, but I really did that, you know. Because, you know, the way I felt, if there was a car accident, well, there would be this car and you would say, well, you know, that's what happened to them, sort of thing, you know. Or if it happened someplace else, you know, you could always say, you could go and look at the place. But here, you know, this they, they just left and uh, they never came back, sort of. And there was no boat or nothing, you know, and you could never say to the kids either, you know, look, at that's the boat, you know, that your daddy used to fish on or something. You just can't say that because the boat or nothing, there's just nothing left, you know. <laughs> We think it's a section of hull with the, with the um, ribbing. You can see the ribbing and the hull section. We would hope that um, it's possibly from the, the forward part of the boat. And we would hope that if we come across any further section, it would be the rear section that contains the bunks. And we hope to find this possibly intact. But you can see yourself that the chances of finding anything intact uh, are very slim in, in that sea. What we were uh, intending to do was to, uh, we set shot lines yesterday out here and we were to go down in the shot lines and get below the turbulence of the waves, swim into the cliff face, search the area, swim back out and come up where the wave wasn't breaking very, very near the rock. And uh, that's impossible today because we, uh, any of our smaller dinghies, the trawlers can't go in there so we've got to send in small rubber dinghies and they're not just seaworthy from conditions that are existing there today. And so we have called off the operation for the day at least.
Well, the position is quite frustrating because uh, the longer this goes on and the, the longer the weather is as bad as it is, the more pressure is becoming on the divers to get in. And the danger is that they might get in in conditions that are not suitable. So we have to keep holding ourselves back uh, and weighing up the situation until we are all satisfied that it is diveable. There are certain divers would be prepared to take a risk in those conditions. However, uh, we are not prepared to take any risks at this stage. We will not dive unless it is absolutely safe to do so. We will, of course, be out again tomorrow to take another look at this area at first light, and it may then be possible tomorrow. But if this wind continues in the direction that it's in now, uh, we are not very optimistic. Uh, it's worth staying for another couple of days at least uh, and seeing if the wind drops or if it uh, varies to the east from the landward, then we may get divers in. So we will, we will be here for another couple of days at least. Bodies are all they're supposed to come up in nine days. Now, what is the cause of that? I don't really know myself, but uh, it's happened in times before they come up in nine days. So let's hope in God that they come up here now to nine days and get washed in here. If the one stays this way, they have a good chance of coming in. In fact, they're probably welcome in, unless they're caught in the bottom, you know. If they're caught in the bottom, then, well, I fear the worst. for you is ever put to shame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear people, today is the first Sunday of Advent. The Mass today is being offered for the repose of the souls of the five young men who lost their lives in the uh, disaster that befell the fishing boat Carriguna on Tuesday morning last. We also think of the search that is continuing for the recovery of the remaining bodies. And we make a special plea in our prayers today for suitable conditions for the resumption of the search, and that God may grant that the bodies of the missing four may be found. And now, my brothers and sisters, coming together as God's family, calling to mind our sins, the confidence that has asked the Father's forgiveness. We know him to be full of gentleness and compassion. against the sea. I think it was an act of God and well we'll hope it'll never happen again.
The search was continued when weather conditions improved. Several weeks later, the body of one of the crew of the Carriguna was washed up on the Donegal coast. The other three were not recovered. Now were reasons for both disasters firmly established.